Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are back or I have your very first look <laughs> at the tier 7 Japanese gunboat destroyer the Akizuki. So let's get into it. First of all you're gonna notice I've got a different commander. We're no longer using uh, Tanaka. We are using Takeo Kurita or Takio Kurita however it's pronounced. We are always going to be using Eric Bay and Jersey Swirsky on destroyers because I like to get close. Uh, we are running Observant Rage or Rage. We are running Look at Me Now. We are running Twist and Track and we are running Smoke on the Water. Now there is a, an option here that you can have for your legendary perk. I chose not to use Evil Sparks. I have tried Evil Sparks and it has absolutely ruined me so I am not using Evil Sparks. It doesn't seem to work for the 100 millimeter guns like it did for the uh, light cruisers as far as equilibrium of power. So personally, I don't feel that that perk is worth it. It cuts your damage down so much that it's insane. So uh, I, I highly recommend you don't use that perk, but to each their own, if you wanna use that perk, it's up to you. Personally, it didn't seem to help me at all. Uh, it seemed to do quite the opposite. Um, now, we are using Unstoppable because your engine is going to get knocked out a lot uh, in this ship. You, every time you get hit, your engine gets knocked out. So being able to maintain some sort of power is essential. All right. So moving on to the ship itself, we are running Aiming Systems Mod 1. We are running Propulsion Mod. We are running Concealment System Mod. And we are running Main Battery Mod 3. Now... Uh, if we get into the actual meat and potatoes, we have two spokes. They are long duration smokes. We have two engine boosts and two torpedo reload boosters. But before you get all upset about the torpedo reload booster on this thing, just keep in mind that you only get four torpedoes. Okay? And they are in a very bad place on the ship and have a terrible firing angle. So, survivability you have 20,400 hit points which is putting you right up there with the uh, Russian and German destroyers uh, better it, I believe that makes it third best somebody can uh, tell me otherwise but I'm fairly confident that that gives you the third highest hit points of any destroyer uh, the main battery you have eight 100 millimeter guns that's the downside you have, yes, you have eight guns. Yes, they reload in 2.4 seconds. They reach out to 11.4 kilometers with our build. And the 180 degree turn time is finally usable at 10.3 seconds. So it is very good in that sense. But the, uh, the 100 millimeter guns are rough. They just don't have any sort of hitting power. Uh, now, because we are not using the evil sparks, we have 1200 uh, HE damage per shell potential uh, but if you use evil sparks I believe it goes down to 610 620 something like that the chance to set fire is horrendous it's at five percent uh, basically you almost never set fires uh, I believe the best I've gotten in this thing so far is four fires and that is with 350 hits on the main batteries so uh, yeah it's not a fire starter not not so much anyway but it can dish out a lot of damage over, you know, just by sheer willpower. Uh, the AP is actually surprisingly good and very effective against destroyers that go broadside. Now, if they're bow tanking you or stern tanking you, not so much. But if they are broadside to you, load that AP and, and punch them. You'll hit them for 35 to 4,000 damage a shot. Like it's it's nasty. So the AP is effective, even against uh, cruisers and battleships that give you a broadside, though you will start to get a lot of shatters. But the HE does pretty well sometimes. It's, it's a lot of shatters, I will give it that, in the HE. Torpedoes, you get four of them. They're 610 millimeters. They reload relatively quickly at uh, only 112 seconds, so less than two minutes. Uh, the maximum damage is 20,967, which I believe is just behind the Yudachi. I uh, could be wrong. Uh, it, it might be because I actually use uh, Tanaka on the Yudachi, so these might be the same torpedoes that the Yudachi gets uh, in the Kagero. So that's that could be a thing. But they have 10 kilometer range, which is plenty. Uh, torpedo speed is 67 knots, so not horrible, not great. 
Uh, maneuverability, 34 knots is slow as crap. This thing is slow. Don't make it, don't get it twisted, it's slow. Now I know you can change your, your build to get it faster and all that stuff, but at the end of the day, the fastest you're gonna get your ship is gonna be like standard destroyer speeds, like 37 knots. It's, it's just not worth it in my opinion. Turning circles, not good. Even though we have a relatively decent rudder shift time, the turning circle of this ship is not good at 730 meters. Uh, so keep that in mind as well. It, it change, It's agile in short-term movements, but when it comes to long sweeping turns, that's where you'll notice that it just doesn't, doesn't want to turn. Concealment, we've got it down to five kilometers with our build, which is usable. It's not great. It, it's, it's good enough to deal with most destroyers, but you're still going to run into those, uh, those Japanese destroyers that have 4.6, 4.7 kilometer detection, and that's going to be an issue because they can, they can outspot you and stay out of your range because they have speed and they can keep you spotted for the enemy. So keep that in mind. Sure shot. Shells with good ballistic trajectory maintain velocity, making aiming easier. This is true. Uh, it is very, very easy to shoot uh, anything in this ship. Rapid reload. Torps reload more quickly than average. That is true. Nimble aim. Above average main battery traverse speed gives an edge in close quarters combat, and that's what I was talking about. We finally get some turrets that can rotate on a Japanese destroyer, which is nice. Akazuki, one of the most sophisticated destroyers in the Japanese Navy, this ship was specifically designed to provide anti-aircraft defense. Due to her significantly increased dimensions, she was equipped with new dual-purpose main gun mounts that had a very high rate of fire. Among the drawbacks of the ship were the relatively weak torpedo armament and an insufficiently high speed. She entered service in 1942 and there were 13 in the series. So let's take a look at her. I've got, uh, I want to say it's the Regia Marina camo on it and I made it permanent. Uh, I like this camo on this. I actually preferred the Hunter camo but I didn't have enough to make it permanent so uh, I didn't want to use it. But uh, yeah, it's a good looking ship and I just... I'll get into the rest of it in the gameplay, so uh, let's get to it. Alrighty, so we're going to be on land fire, and we are in a division with my buddy, Soviet. Uh, you guys know him from the Minecraft series. We've also had several matches here and there throughout the channel. So, uh, yeah, we're going to be in the Akizuki. We're going to push up this left side, try to spot early on, and then we're going to let this thing speak for itself. Uh, now... The biggest issue that I've had with this, this ship so far is just the fact that it's got 100 millimeter guns. They just don't do anything most of the time. Um, the AP is surprisingly decent, uh, but you need to be really, really up against flat broadsides in order to take full advantage of that AP. So most of the time you're going to be shooting HE. Uh, which is why I say you don't want to use the Evil Spark skill, because Evil Sparks cut your HE damage in half. And the penetration that you get from that isn't worth it. You're not doing any more damage. In fact, anytime you come up against a destroyer, your HE is useless. Now, the good news is the AP on this is very capable of killing destroyers quickly. Uh, generally speaking, if you catch an, a um, destroyer broadside, the AP in this thing can generally deliver three to 5,000 damage per salvo. Okay, so that's getting rid of a Yudachi in three shots. You know, that sort of thing. Um, and that's if you catch them broadside. Now, we're going to push straight out. Um, obviously, on Land of Fire, it's not a domination for once. Holy crap, am I right? Good lord. But we're going to push out. We're going to try to get these guys spotted. There's an island between us at the moment. But uh, depending on what the enemy does, they should be getting lit up pretty quickly. Uh, and then it's going to come down to, uh, you know, just my teammates helping. Now, Colorado gets spotted. Obviously, he's not in range. But notice my RDF signal, my locating of the enemy ships, isn't pointing directly at the uh, Colorado. There's somebody else over here, and that's what I'm interested in, because it's most likely a destroyer. And, as you're going to find out in very quick succession, it is exactly a destroyer. Hello, Kagero. How you doing, buddy? Hold these. Now, here he's broadside to me. I hit him really hard with the HE, and then I switch to the AP here, because I want to show you guys what the AP can do. Uh, unfortunately, he does disappear into his smoke, but uh, that's just the way it goes. Now, I was expecting him to reverse off the island, so I, I launched the torps a little further to the right. 
Uh, in fact, if I'd have just launched it at his last known, he kind of just sits there. I don't know if he thought that I was going to, like, give up my pursuit of him or, or what was going to happen. But, uh, yeah, he's, he's going to just sit there and hope that I don't find him. I don't know. It's one of those, if you can't see me, you can't shoot me, right? If I, or if you can't see me, I don't exist. No, I, I know where you're at. And sure enough, hello. <laughs> How you doing? Now, first shot was AP. Obviously, he's bow tank or he's stern tanking me. We couldn't actually do any damage. Uh, but now that we load the AP, or HE, sorry. I'm getting it confused. Things happen quickly when you're loading every 2.4 seconds. <laughs> okay? But, uh... But yeah, we managed to get 10,000 damage off of him that quickly, uh, which is which is good, and that's why I say do not use that evil sparks because evil sparks that I would have been doing like 300 damage per shot with the the HE, it, it's garbage. Um, it's definitely not worth it. You don't get enough penetration buff to warrant losing half of your hit points. Unlike the uh, light cruisers that use equilibrium of power, where it suddenly gives you enough uh, penetration on your HE that you're not shattering on things that you used to shatter on, so that you get more damage overall. That is not the case with these 100 millimeter guns. So that's just my opinion. Take it with a grain of salt, uh, but that's what I say about the evil spark skill. And from what I've heard from other people, they're agreeing with it. Um, so I'm going to be chasing these guys down. Obviously, I want to keep the Miyoko spotted. I would love to start shooting him, but shooting at a Japanese heavy cruiser is a bad plan when you're in a destroyer. Um, be just because of their deletion ability. Like, you have the best HE in the game. With the exception of maybe Nelson. <laughs> but, but the Japanese cruisers can just wreck you in a destroyer, no matter how many hit points you have. But... Uh, Soviet says he's going to be unable to shoot the Miyoko in the near future. I'm going to go ahead and try to line up a Torp Strike on this Vanguard. We are going to use the first of our Torp Reload Boosters. Notice that we only get four Torps, just one launcher. So you really got to make them count. Now, I should have anticipated him slowing down here. But he didn't appear to be slowing down, so I was just like, oh, we'll just send him in the same spot, just a little further ahead. But, because I waited so long in between, he's going to see the torpedoes coming at him. He's going to slow down, and that's going to allow him to dodge the majority of these, and then all of the second set, uh, which is unfortunate. But, this is about the time that we actually get to our uh, time to engage moment. Now, you can see I was watching these torps. I don't want to let him know early that the torps were on the way, but he was able to slow down enough, and he only takes a single torpedo, which is unfortunate <laughs> it really is uh, and I believe that's the last torpedo that we're gonna hit in this entire match so we're gonna have to do something with our guns so without further ado let's set a smoke screen <laughs> wait for it DACA unleashed all the DACA forever and ever and ever you will not escape hopefully <laughs> we get a fire early, which is something that doesn't happen very often. Uh, and he, he does make the right choice of not actually uh, damage conning. Oh wait, he couldn't damage con because we hit him with a torpedo. And that torpedo, of course, caused flooding, so he had to damage con that. Which means this fire is going to burn for a while. And any other subsequent fire that we might cause in the, you know, near future. Now, there are some people that are talking about using the, cru the cruiser commanders to boost the HE fire chance on this, and that's probably a good play, but there's just too many things that you give up for that, and I don't know that I would be happy with that personally. The fire chance would be amazing, don't get me wrong. Even if it's a 2 or 3% chance, I mean, that you're basically almost doubling your fire chance uh, at that point because the fire chance is so low. So any extra fire chance is huge. And we get another fire on the Vanguard. And you can see we are just DACA away. Just nobody can just... This is the most... What is the word I'm looking for? Demoralizing moment that you can be a part of. The Anybody who's ever been on the receiving end of Atlanta's or Cleveland's and now this thing or Fletcher's, like you guys know that this is horrible, especially for battleships, because there's nothing you can do about it. Like, you're so big that there's just nothing you can do. Now, our smoke's about to run out. He's just now getting out of range. That was kind of the perfect scenario, so we're going to go ahead 
uh, fire a couple last shots here, and now that we're out of the smoke, it's time to start lighting everybody up. Now, I look back at my buddy Soviet, who has lost all of his hit points, because he's in a battleship, and because they can't shoot me, they all shoot him. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he's unfortunately taken quite the beating, but we're going to see if we can't keep him alive. We've chased everybody from our side of the map all the way over to theirs, and they've given up their base. Like, if, from a... a uh, game standpoint like I don't care what team you're on I don't care how bad your team is you can't do this you cannot give up your base to be capped period and this is why I always say win your side do your best to win your side these guys have been running away from the left side of the map for the entire game and we have taken full advantage of it getting another fire finally um, but we're up to 200 shots hit so it's not like we're getting a lot of fires. Of course, I say that immediately get a second fire on the Vanguard. And hopefully that'll be the end of the Vanguard. Now we get spotted uh, because we're firing at him in the open water. And I'm not too particularly worried about it because he should be dying, except he does get the damage control. Of course he would. Why wouldn't he get his damage control back to save him from burning to death with two fires? Unleash more DACA! <laughs> All the DACA landing it on his superstructure onto the deck. He's at far enough range that we're plunging into his deck with these HE shells. And we get a kill! Uh, his AP doesn't do a whole lot of damage to us. And now we get to sit in their base. Now, I'm not chasing that battleship off the map. He is useless to his team, so there's no reason for me to engage him whatsoever. And he is currently the closest person to me. But watch the little indicator uh, on my screen that shows me the nearest enemy. Wait for it to flip. As soon as it flips, I know that somebody's about to come at me. And there it is. As soon as it flips, I am ready. You can see I'm starting to get my guns on the right side of my ship because I'm anticipating a battle. And sure enough, very quickly thereafter, Miyoko comes around the corner. I go ahead, I launch torpedoes on him. And then shortly after, the Baltimore is also going to get lit up. Now, I've got my smoke screen ready. So it's almost time to start with the deck again. We're going to go ahead and pop the smoke, and now that we're in the smoke, we're going to unleash all holy hell on these guys. <laughs> and they are not going to have a good time, because much like the battleship, it may be death of a bajillion cuts, but it's still death, eventually. Now we've switched to the AP here to showcase that the AP is actually decent. Unfortunately, we don't get to use it much because the Otago on our team uh, mops the floor with them. But AP, obviously, about tanking Balti. That's not what you want. So we switch back to the HE, and we're going to get some shots, hopefully, into the superstructure here. You can see I'm having to aim off of his ship behind him to get the shells to actually impact his ship because we're just kind of missing all over the place. But uh, we're doing everything that we can. And before my buddy dies... He manages to get another good salvo off and absolutely punches the Baltimore in the mouth. And so with that, we go back to trying to deck at him to death. Now, I do start to roll out of the, the base here because I expected him to, to do exactly what he just did. Or not roll out of the base, roll out of the smoke. But I knew he was going to radar me eventually. It was just how long was it going to be before he decided to radar me. Uh, but anyway... We managed to survive. We've got the base almost capped. It's just me and the Otago. The Otago here, I don't know how much damage he's he's got, but I know that he has thrived off of taking the kills that I have left in his wake. So uh, he's definitely happy to have been following me, but you need that in this ship. Uh, this is a ship that very, it, it struggles to finish people off. It really does. Uh, this is the best match that I've had in this thing so far, as far as damage goes. It also is the best match to showcase kind of both AP, HE, uh, the role of this ship, and the fact that it's probably better in a division than it is as a solo ship. Uh, I may do another build where I try to use the command or the cruiser commander, increase the fire chance, and see how many fires that we can set, because I think there's actually a possibility that that could be potentially good. Uh, but we won't know until we try, right? So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. We ended up with, uh, what was it, 89,000 damage? Yep, 89,000 damage with 339 targets hit. That's not too shabby. 
top of the leaderboard, 2200 base XP. So if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.